Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's pre-market prep, brought to you by MarketFi. We have a couple uh, strategists here from Drive Wealth. We have Brian Dolan. He's the head market strategist. And we have Michael Fitzgerald, who's head of corporate strategy at Drive Wealth. Gentlemen, how are you doing this morning? We're doing great. Good morning, Joel. Thanks for coming on, guys. Brian, I wanted to ask you if we could just start out. You know, let's let's start out kind of vague here. Can you give me give me your outlook on the global economy? You seeing you seeing strength here globally? You seeing fragility globally? What are you thinking? I definitely think it's uh, more the latter. Definitely a fra fragile global outlook. Uh, we're looking at um, all the major central banks are still in the process of pumping in liquidity as fast as they can. Uh, the Fed is retreating from its uh, bias toward tightening anytime soon. So I'm not looking for the Fed to do anything and. 2015, uh, and um, unfortunately, though, the overall picture in terms of your investor's outlook remains that there is no alternative to stocks. Uh, there is no uh, likely upside for interest rates anytime soon, and, and so the only investment alternative that makes any sense is still stocks, but then we're left with a bit of a, obviously, we are at uh, market highs uh, across the globe. And those are showing signs of stalling. So rather than piling in at the highs, I much prefer to be a, a patient uh, buy on dips investor in this environment. A uh, little bit of a correction mode here in the market, Brian. Uh, a winding of some big trades. The long U.S. dollar, short oil, long treasuries seem to be kind of uh, uh, coming out. Uh, give us your take here on that. On the oil, starting with oil here, trying to bunch go through $60 here. You think that the continued short covering? Uh, looking at it longer term, we have not really even come close to a 50% retracement from back when we traded at 107. Right. Uh, you're correct, Joel. What we're seeing is basically an unwinding, a, a correction in a lot of the most popular trades from the fourth quarter and most of the first quarter. Uh, so the dollar is coming off. Uh, U.S. Uh, yields are backing higher. Uh, and then oil is closely linked with the, the fate of the dollar. So I think there is some more room for a euro rebound, a dollar pullback. This, again, goes back to the whole notion that uh, Fed rate hike expectations are being pushed back, uh, and uh, Europe is still uh, starting to show some better signs. Uh, so I think ultimately you have to view this as a correction. Uh, the major trends that were in place uh, as of the fourth quarter and into the first quarter and currently uh, are still such that uh, the dollar, uh, the Fed is still the only central bank globally poised to tighten sometime in the next 12 months, uh, and that's going to continue to support the dollar. And then Europe, uh, they're continuing with quantitative easing. We expect the Bank of Japan to also introduce additional quantitative easing later in the year. So that, again, the major trends there are still in favor of the dollar, against the euro, uh, against the yen, and still supportive of equities overall. So look at this as a correction. Look at it as an opportunity to step in at more uh, beneficial levels for the ultimate reassertion of those major trends. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wanted to start out with a quick question for uh, Michael. And Drive Wealth, uh, could you tell us about the company and uh, what you do for investors? Yeah, th thanks, Joel. Uh, yeah, we're proud to introduce uh, Benzinga and your listeners to Drive Wealth. Our overall model is we invite the world to invest. And what our vision is, is our vision is to aggregate retail investors worldwide and provide everyone everywhere with low-cost uh, access to the U.S. equity markets, you know, the leading you know, ADRs and ETFs. You know, our, our viewpoint of the world is that there's a, a huge increase in uh, consumer disposable income worldwide and particularly coming out of the emerging markets and frankly, the financial markets, uh, we believe, are behind the global brands on this. You know, you do any traveling overseas, and you'll see the voracious appetite for, <coughs> for Apple, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Nike. Um, but, but there really is just very little access for those, those uh, increasingly wealthy consumers uh, to get access to the U.S. equities markets. And so, so we, we have the licenses and the platform to aggregate customers at as low as two ninety nine a trade, no matter where you are in the world. How did you come up with Drive Wealth? That's an interesting question. We went through some bad names first, <laughs> and then we found one that we thought could, uh, you know, because you know, we're an invest, we are, we're an investing platform, and you know, we really we have very robust educational tools. 
because a lot of these retail investors uh, will be investing with us for the first time. And so we really wanted to portray ourselves as driving the long-term wealth of the retail community. Okay. And uh, is there any account minimum that you need in order to get involved in the, on the platform? Yes. Yeah, so we have a $50 initial account minimums and then no ongoing minimums. But we are kind of what you see is what we get. There's no hidden fees. As you mentioned, no matter where you are in the world, you could be as low as 299 And our real vision and what we're launching uh, this week is a concept of a brokerage as a service. And what that means is that you know, we are partnering with large uh, financial services companies worldwide who want to provide their customers with access to the U.S. equity markets but hadn't found, really found a way to do so. And so we offer them a brokerage as a service where we have various widgets where we do the KYC, AML, the anti-money laundering. Uh, we do the onboarding. Uh, we, do the, 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 we provide the, the way they can do the funds transfer. And we plug into their system so they can offer their customers you know, access to the most desired asset class in the world. Okay, go back to you, Brian, and just saw uh, the whole interest rate uh, thing. Bonds have been getting killed lately. Uh, that's somewhat an indication of the Fed making a move. The Fed says they're not making a move. Economic data that we're getting surely is not showing a robust economy or any kind of inflation. What, what, what's on your agenda for, for interest rates? Sure. I'm looking at that primarily as a, uh, a, a position unwind. Okay, the market had been incredibly long of treasuries. Uh, and we're seeing this globally. German yields have also risen uh, about 20 basis points in the last couple of weeks on, on air, essentially. So I'm looking at mostly as a positioning unwind, and I think there's a little bit more room to run there. Uh, but again, ultimately, the direction is not going to be higher for interest rates globally. So look at this as an opportunity to buy uh, German government uh, bonds. Look at it as an opportunity to buy U.S. Treasury securities. Um, I, I've recently purchased um, uh, e U.S. government uh, ETFs on the intermediate time uh, on this uh, pullback and looking to add to that uh, for, again, uh, another dip back below, well below 2% again. So I think we'll see 1.8 before we see 2.2. All right, Brian. So what, uh, what are we looking at here as far as, uh, you know, perhaps buying any dips, any corrections? How do you feel about the long-term view on the market? I think that's still the way to go. Again, I would say for the next uh, two years, really, uh, we're looking at this still incredibly low global interest rate environment. Uh, and during that time, uh, investors are going to continue to have only one alternative, and that's going to be basically equity investments. Um, and then in terms of uh, global apportioning, I think China is um, showing signs right now, and, and they're the, one of the bigger market risks out there if they start to see, if that rally starts to break down. Uh, but ultimately, I think um, the emerging markets right now uh, are showing some very good uh, valuation levels and would be a good um, way to uh, average in uh, over the next several months into the emerging markets for the longer-term positioning, a longer-term investment. And there in particular, I would favor uh, Central Europe, Latin America, and then Asia, excluding China. So how, do you use technicals at all for any of your analysis? And if so, how, how do you use it? What do you, what do you prefer to use? Oh, I use lots of technicals. Um, so I love, I'm a big follower of Ichimoku, and, uh, which uh, is the Japanese cloud charting uh, system. And there we've had some pretty significant breakdowns uh, in uh, recent price action. Uh, so there is, as I said, some, definitely some further potential. Just basic trend line analysis will also show you that the uh, MSCI World Index has broken its most recent uh, uptrend uh, basically since the uh, beginning of March. And the S&P is showing similar signs, and it actually just touched the top of the cloud yesterday. So there is definitely some further potential. The bottom of the cloud is at 2,050, and so I would be keeping an eye on those levels. So from the perch where you gentlemen are sitting then, if we're looking at a world where we have uh, basically global QE, are, are there any regions that you see that are perhaps better valued than others in the light of you know, these, these low rate, high, high, um, high monetary policy kind of regions? Um, thinking specifically sure. of Europe and Japan? Yes. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, first, the emerging markets, I think they've had a nice um, setback over the last, um, say, six months and, and have recently in the past months shown some resilience. Uh, then with continuing QE in Japan and Europe, 
uh, we think those are also pretty good opportunities. Uh, again, the uh, Japanese are expected to increase their quantitative easing, and the Europeans just got started, and despite market hesitation, uh, the ECB is not going to pull up anytime soon uh, in pumping liquidity into the markets there. So again, European equities, the biggest risk there to European equities is a stronger rebound in the euro. That would then cause if the European trades become somewhat crowded uh, and a sharper rebound, say, above the 115, 117 area against the dollar, that could then trigger a further exodus out of European stocks. But again, only for the short term, uh, still the longer term trend is going to be to sell Euro rallies and uh, continue to buy European equities. Uh, always sector rotation going on, uh, seeing it in the market, kind of out of the momos as of late. Uh, where is the money flowing to, in your opinion? I think the money has, the re recent flows have been uh, to re-engage with the emerging markets. And there, again, it's, it's more of a broader index uh, play. The uh, other, in terms of other sectors right now, I think you have to still go with the, uh, the consumer staples. At this point, more of a de defensive uh, posture. Um, and, you know, shy away a little bit. I think the tech, the tech sector has become a bit uh, overvalued and a little bit... Um, overheated. So uh, focus again a little bit more, certainly during this period of correction, the next month, two months, uh, to take a look at more of the, the defensive uh, consumer staples, uh, even if you want uh, some of the utility sector, the energy sector a little bit. Um, oil has had a nice rebound and that's going to be, again, your, your investors, your traders are going to want to pay attention to the relationship between the dollar and oil prices. Uh, there's still a global oversupply and it's um, the fact that we've had this rebound, I think, is a little bit sooner than I was expecting. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I would look for oil to top out um, in, in not, not much higher than where we are right now. But if, again, if the dollar takes a further dive, the euro bounces a little bit further, that could propel oil more to the 65 area. Do you like to short stocks? Short stocks? Yeah. Um, generally speaking, no. From an investor standpoint, uh, I don't think that's a, a more of a speculative play. Um, I will certainly hedge using some inverse uh, equity ETFs, uh, but in, in terms of actually picking short selling stocks, um, it, you know, the, the risk reward the calculation for me is simply not there. Right, it, it's difficult too. I mean, especially if you're dealing with the invest, you know, new public and you know people are new to the markets and stuff. It's a difficult concept. And if you look at a long-term chart, it always hasn't been uh, the most uh, favorable proposition uh, being short. But uh, any any take on like some of the momentum stocks, like a, something like a Twitter, something like that? Is there enough fundamentals and you know for you to get involved in that, or the valuations are just a uh, little ridiculous? Yeah, I find it difficult to call you know something like Twitter as a momentum stock. I mean, certainly it has has a nice price movement, obviously destroyed in the last uh, 48 hours. But um, ultimately, they're in such they're in an industry that can change in in overnight, virtually uh, with uh, the new competition, a change in consumer habits. Uh, you see any kind of a drop in uh, users, uh, new signups, things like that and the market will run for the hills in a heartbeat. So um, I, I tend to not focus on those. They're a little bit too faddish for me. Uh, you might call me an old, old school, but um, I prefer to see the, the companies that are a little bit more established uh, and producing regular profits and not reliant on uh, short-term social fads. Okay, and uh, going back, Michael, you still with us there? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, just uh, real quick before we end the show, you talked about you know some of the educational things that are available on uh, your platform. Could you tell us about those? Uh, um, I'm going to take that one from Mike. I don't mean to dominate the microphone here, um, but we have a number of different um, educational uh, offerings, uh, a series of free courses starting with the very, very basics. It assumes zero investment knowledge. What is a stock? What is a bond? What is an ETF? Uh, what is inflation, those kinds of articles. Um, then it goes on to a little bit more sophisticated, what is asset allocation, what is diversification, what is correlation. And then we've also designed a, um, a higher level, more comprehensive investor education course that we'll be offering in, in the not too distant future. And that's uh, almost le uh, college level investor education introduction. And that covers everything from 
fundamental economic analysis to technical analysis to, uh, again, asset allocation and portfolio management. And then we're also going to be partnering with a number of leading industry uh, education providers uh, that will also be approaching uh, the investing space from different angles, some more technically oriented, uh, some more um, fundamentally oriented. So we're looking forward to, I think I'd, I'd invite your listeners to uh, check out our site and uh, see uh, what the educational material looks like, and hopefully they can take a spin around and uh, learn something new. Okay, we've been on the line with Brian Dolan, head market strategist at Drive Wealth, and Michael Fitzgerald, who's head of corporate strategy at Drive Wealth. Thanks a lot, guys, for coming on. Have a great day. Oh, do, do you have a pick for the Kentucky Derby? <laughs> we just did an office pool here where we get a random pick. Oh, uh, 20 bucks a head, and we'll see who Whoa. wins. And that winner take all? Wow. Uh, first, second, and third, we'll get uh, various payouts. Nice. I want to. I want you guys to come back on the show. We're doing it here. We're not quite as rich of the taste of the twenty dollar level here, but I twisted some arms and we're doing the same thing. But whoever gets uh, Dortmund, I think they got a good shot. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much, guys.